Welcome back, Dr. Gufro and Mr. Merriweather. This is the iCare Consortium uh, Cancer Research Link. We are so excited to, the, to be back in the first segment. We had a great introduction into the different projects that we have, into why uh, iCare was, uh, uh, was established. And of course, uh, iCare was established thanks to the funding from uh, the Department of Defense. So, one of the things that we that we sort of discussed in the last segment is that there are five projects, and all these projects are supported by cause and services. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Ungofo. Um, can you briefly introduce us to the cause and services that support these research projects? Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, this is really an ecosystem working together. So let me start with the core, I mean, the, the, the consortium itself. So the consortium we have as a contact MPR, we have Dr. Odenina, and then we have Dr. Dronka from Mayo Clinic. Uh, we have Dr. Ngufo, myself uh, from Mayo Clinic. We have Dr. Ashing from City of Hope. We have Dr. Kanijing from College, from Georgia College. Uh, we have Dr. Rotimi from University, from Covenant University in Nigeria. And then we have Dr. Harris, from Florida AMM University. Now, this main call we have now advisory advisory board. We have the community uh, advisory board, which is headed by Chair Mr. Merriweather here. Uh, the members also include Dr. Erifa, Pastor Sheriff, uh, Mr. Griggs, and Captain Yaya. Now, on the advisory board, we also have the external advisory board. On the external advisory board, we have the chair, which is Dr. Ragin. We have Mr. Shoggins, the co-chair. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, Dr. Dr. Green, and then we also have Dr. Medin Hall. Now, external advisory board, we also have internal advisory board. Now, over to the internal advisory board, we have Dr. Colin Otero, which is a chair. We, we have Dr. Okinef, which is uh, who, who is the co-chair, and the members include Dr. Wamak and Dr. Dr. Loduno and Dr. Eni. Now. Over to the cause. Now we have a total of six cause. Now we have the cause again, just like we explained, the cause are really designed now to help the pilot project, the five pilot project that we have, and then also to access each other. Now, the first call is we have the transnational research and clinical services. This call is headed by Dr. Dronka, uh, who's the MPL um, uh, <clears throat> liaison. And then we have the data management and analytics services call or DAMAS. And uh, this call is led by Dr. Carter. Uh, we have the partnership engagement services call. Uh, this call is led by Dr. Willis. Uh, we have the pathology and biospecimen resource call. And this call is led by Dr. Reynolds. We also have the methodology and measures services call. And this call is led by Dr. Yos. Now we have the data health and human services call, and this call is led by Dr. Liu. Now, all these calls, they really have now, they're really like sitting on top of the pilot project, providing resources and services. Now, each one of them will have the, the internal advisory board that will meet and then advise them to also have the external advisory board. So you see how the all the, the, the ecosystem of eye care is coming together. And I, and I think this kind of addresses you know, some of the things that Mr. Merivelt mentioned. We have the community MPs that are there to guide us, to guide that research that we do. I can do things on my AI computer, but how does that translate? How does, how does that speak to Mr. Merivelt? That's why we have that community MPI, and that's why we have the international, I mean, internal, international advisory board, and that's why we have the external advisory board. All these components are coming together. Thank you, Dr. Tongo, for a while. It looks like it does take a village. <laughs> 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 or a town, or a city, or a country, or the world. Uh, this is a lot. So, Ms. Meriwether, you lead the Community Advisory Board for the IKEA Consortium, as mentioned by Dr. Ngofo. So, uh, can you tell us more about the Community Advisory Board and how they support the projects and the cause? Well, uh, the Community Advisory Board, they, they support, support the causes by taking the, by meeting once a month 
listening to the different the progress that we have made, making recommendations once we hear uh, from whatever from wherever from whatever program has come forward to say, hey, I want to do this. Uh, one of the good things about it is it gives us a chance to, as a group, meet and discuss what is going on so far. What's the progress? Uh, what's one committee might say, can you review this? Uh, what do you think about this? And it gives an opportunity for feedback. That's the good part about it. And being that it's not just, as Dr. She said, it's not just here. We got the same setup we got here, we got set up overseas. And they're doing the same thing, taking the, the information that they're receiving for their different projects and asking the same committees, uh, advisory board, hey, what you think about this? This is where I feel that the, the, uh, vi the viral, viral video comes in effect. She is, not, she is not just getting us, he's sharing that information globally. <laughs> So by sharing it globally, as we did today in our meeting, Dr. She, when you share it, you're saying this is what we're going to be bringing to the table pretty soon. Uh, we're a couple months out working on this. We made the video. The video that we made, it's not just for U.S. That's the good thing. That's what we are saying. So being a part of the community advisory board, I, that's just one part. When you go to the uh, partnership engagement service, which is another conversation, that's still like a community advisory board because you are taking the information and you're still working under that umbrella, but you also getting the ear of the community. You're getting the ear of your partners, your collabor collaborators, collaborators to say, can you give us some feedback on this? As Dr. Odetna would always say, hey, I, I'm gonna give y'all a couple of questions now, but I need y'all to respond to me yesterday. <laughs> Not today. I need y'all to respond yesterday so I can have, have this information on hand. And, and the good thing, Dr. Odetna, about all of this is, this is, as someone would say, this is up to date. This is not going back three months ago because the mission that we are doing it does, it can't be, you cannot sit still on your laurels. You have to continue to progress and make effort to bring all this apart. As, as we said earlier, the community advisory board with the different members have different backgrounds. They have different uh, intellect. They have different way of their processing. And it's the same way with our brothers overseas. They are, uh, Dr. Chief, they, they process things different than us. The dialogue is different. The dialect is different, but the, the mission is the same. It's just how they interpret, not how they interpret, but it's how they hear it. And when they hear things, I might say one thing, Dr. Odette, in one way, but if it doesn't sound right, it won't be translated properly. So that's why we have this consortium so that we can address everybody at the table in their own dialect, in their own native country, and then we put it all together like a mixing bowl. And this is where we come with the consortium. Yeah, very well said, Mr. Merriweather, very well said. So it looks like the IKEA consortium focuses on several components that are working together to achieve the mission of the consortium, as you and Dr. Ngufo said. So we will be having upcoming segments to find out more about each of those projects and the cause. But let's now talk about so what? I think one of the chairs of our external advisory board, Mr. Wells, shows that is his role is like, so what? So Dr. Ngufo, can you describe how the iCare Consortium will address health equity and improve the quality of life of prostate cancer patients and survivors? Oh my, thanks for that question, Dr. Elena. This is, I don't know, I can go on and on and on on that <laughs> one really. But to really be concise, this is that's why we put together these five projects in various different calls to really to address some of the barriers, you know, impacting prostate cancer management, clinical management, research. Dr. Dinia's research, my research, everywhere is pointing us to like how do we address, how do we address health equity, reduce disparity. And overall, improve quality of life. What are some, first? We have, what are some of those barriers? And as I mentioned, the five calls we really put together to work in sync to address these things, as well as supported by the calls. 
Um, first, let's let's look about let's 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 look on health equity and disparities. What are what are those challenges or barriers? We have a health system factor. Mm. And the health system factor, what are some of the things when I tell me health system? Yeah, it's a big word, but, but what are is is very small. Lack of access, mm -hmm. technology gaps, stereotyping, organizational health literacy. Sometimes the organization don't really have know what they are doing, and then lack of cultural sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Hey, but all this is addressed by all five projects mm -hmm. in their own way. You know, project well, pilot project one addresses at the point of prostate cancer diagnosis. You have lack of access. You have technology gap. Blah blah. It goes on. Pilot project two at home care addresses the same thing. Pilot project three in survivorship. So you see all the projects address the healthcare system factors. Now, we talk about healthcare system, but they also, we also know at the provider level. I'm sure you can say at the provider level, pilot project two is about the education. You know, how you know we have the provider bias, which may include provider discrimination, marginalization of black men, cultural immunity, and, and so. So pilot project two is really to address those barriers. Now, we also have, except for pilot project five, the other projects deal on the personal level. Mm -hmm. uh, they also do things at the personal level, like who are you as an individual? So as an individual prostate cancer patient, you also have your own social determinant of health barriers. Pilot project one, pilot project two, up to pilot project four will address that. Mm -hmm. You have your health literacy, you have your fears, you have mistrust of the healthcare system. And then big of all, you also have the cultural and language barriers. So mm -hmm. the first four projects will address that. Now, when we are not leaving pilot project five, pilot project five comes in to address you know, what is going on when you look at the genetic or biological level. Mm. What are those barriers? But now it's very easy. It's very easy to see some of those barriers. Under representation of genetic information about black men. It's, it's, if we don't have that information available, we can't even do our research. So there is no representative data available. Now there's limited inclusion of genomic data of about you know precision and personalized medicine. So those are really the barriers that you know pilot project. Five really want to address. Now, I did, this is not really exhaustive, but I, like I said, I can go on and on, but I'll stop there in terms of health equity and um, disparity. Now over to improving quality of life for the prostate cancer um, patient. What are some, some of the barriers that are there? Uh, again, there are a low lot of issues here, but there's limited um, multidisciplinary oncology practice. Mm -hmm. And this one is really, again, going back, it's really led by Pilot Project 2. Now, Pilot Project 2 and Pilot Project 3, they are really dealing with the issue of lack of surveillance, monitoring, and follow-up care. Mm -hmm. Now, Pilot Project 3, as you mentioned, is really about survivorship. But this may, as we, as we know, the surveillance, the monitoring, and follow-up care, they don't have I'm a precise I'm a care management plan about these patients. Now, another thing that all the projects will be looking in their own different dimension, but trying to address one big thing is quality of life. Mm -hmm. So lack of patient-centered model, this lack of patient-centered model that can guide us to see how do we improve quality of life. All these projects will be addressing that in their own different way, using their own different techniques and methodology. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also one thing that's really prevalent. Again, Dr. Edina can say more on this, but there's this lack of patient reported outcome measures mm -hmm. that are tailored to black men. So yes, they are there, they are, they are reported measures that are out there, but are they, are they tailored to black men? So if we could have all those things, they probably, if they are there, they probably don't need eye care but they are not existing, they are barriers. And that's why we have eye care. Thank you so much. Wow, that is that is a lot. That is a mm -hmm. lot. 
yeah. you know, it is so good to really be able to have this focus that say, we want to take care of black men. And, and there's no shame in saying that because this disease significantly impacts black men. How do we eliminate health disparities? How do we achieve health equity? And how do we improve our quality of life is all in the I care for black men consortium. So talking about supporting prostate cancer patients uh, and quality of life, and survivorship. Mr. Merriweather, you, you recently participated in the filming of the virtual robot assistance to support black men. Can you share your experience about this filming? Yes, the filming took place at the American Legion Post 197. We was given the opportunity to host the filming on a Friday and a Saturday. And we had Senator Hill, Reverend, uh, McCall and myself and uh, Mr. Emanuel. My experience is that it was a wonderful idea. It was very emotional. It was very intense. The gentlemen participated. They had a great time. And on Saturday, it was even fantastic. We had the boss there. So we had a great time laughing, you know, fun. But the most important, the most important part of this is we had guys to be able to have a conversation. Even though we was filming, nobody was worried about the camera. We was just talking about our experience. And if you allow me a second to back up from Dr. Chi, what he said is, I want, you, I want to just jump in and say something down your throat, Dr. Chi. Look here. <laughs> one, of the, one of the good things about what you said is the different programs that we are reaching, but one of the most important things that when I was listening to you, I was actually sitting up here saying, how does this going to work in my world? My world is grassroots, like with the American Legion Post. We are any city hub for clinical trials and research mm -hmm. um, provided by mail. How does that affect with the, the filming? That is a part of our mission. We provided the location, uh, mail provided the technicians, but the, the men that came up want to do it. That's what I mean when I say participating and giving it all you got. As the American Legion, we are trying to reach out to the community, not just on certain health and health disparity, but we are listening as a grassroots. What do the community do want? So when we did that film, my mind was telling the story. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as you listen to my story, I'm just one of millions of men that then went down that road, that uh, part of that club that they didn't want to be a part of. And that is the uh, survival. Nobody want prostate cancer. But when you got it, you, you heard in the gentleman's story and their journeys on film and in talking to each other as a group saying, hey, man, I went through this, I went through that. And what, what the consortium does that I was trying to get uh, hear from you was, this is going to allow whatever level of education that mm -hmm. you got, we can tell, tell her those different discussions to, to the community we got. Mm -hmm. Me as an advocate, I'm grassroots. I like health fairs. I like uh, uh, events where they call you and say, can you come host a table? But it also gives a grassroots aspect when we are in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And someone say, Brother Murray, what y'all doing over there in Jacksonville, Florida? Hey, you can start your own support group right in your own neighborhood, your own community, your own health club, but you can do it with the information that the consortium is developing. We're not going to tell you how to teach. We're going to give you the tools to teach. Mm -hmm. And that's what that filming does. That filming is basically, you can show that film in Jamaica, uh, Arabia or anywhere that's black men and somebody you know over that I had prostate cancer and they're going to relate. And when we do the virtual film, that's for uh, uh, Dr. Chi, that's for those technology people that got the, the, the upscale. But as I said today, I hope that we still continue to use the videos because testimony, uh, when you got real testimony, for someone, you know, you can maybe say, hey, man, this video is on my phone. You want to watch it? Mm -hmm. uh, 30 seconds? You know, maybe I can't get to the virtual headphone or headset, but I can show you this video. Mm -hmm. in, in summary, 
I'm so happy to be a part of everything because I know it's a little bit out of each group that I can go back in my community and I don't have to try to, I do not have to try to talk above my pay grade. I just talk about what I know the program is and how certain portion is going to benefit. We know that it's a technical part, but we know in each one of these projects, there is a human factor. A mm -hmm. advocate and someone that can actually go to a uh, health fair. Uh, uh, I need some researchers. I need some participants. And we can explain it in our language that doesn't get lost in translation. I can go to Nigeria and say, look at man, don't be ashamed of having prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. the, stigma ain't, the stigma don't just last over in the U.S. The mm -hmm. stigma is around the world. No man wants to tell no one they had it. And I say this to, to the audience. One of the things about this program is it's just in the beginning stages. We're going to fine tune. We're going, you know, we're going to make some mistakes. But the point of making mistakes is knowing that you made the mistakes and you can correct it because we don't want to give out misinformation. We want to give out the best and the brightest information that we are developing. I say we because I sit on stuff sometimes. I don't even know what y'all talking about, but I'm learning. I'm learning because that's how I process stuff. I hear it and I might not understand it today, but I hear it enough, I will. That's what I care stands for. You're gonna hear this stuff over and over. And at some point, some part of one through five, you're gonna resonate with. Thank you, Dr. Odette. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Merriweather. That is so well said. And, and I want to say from, from our point as scientists, we are learning from you as well. And it was such um, you know, I, I can personally say, and I'm sure Dr. Dr. Ngofor would agree with me that we were honored to be the flies in the room, on the wall, listening to you, uh, uh, former Senator Tony Hill, Pastor McCall, Mr. Emmanuel, just talking about your journey uh, with prostate cancer. It was just... Uh, Thank you for the privilege to listen to you. I mean, it was very powerful. And as you said, this is going to resonate uh, all over the world because the journey is the journey. It might be different. We might be in different countries, but the experience and the impact really it affects the numbers and the statistics that we see. They are tears, agonies, a lot of pain um, of people and their family members and their loved ones. So thank you so much. Uh, we really greatly appreciate that. So it's been six months. Uh, it, it, it sounds, I mean, I don't know how you feel to me. It's, it's just as if it's been more than six months. Uh, it's just been six months that, that the I, I Care Consortium was established and funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. Um, I'm going to start with Dr. Ngufo. Within this six months, how has the consortium made an impact in the Black community? Well, um, thank you, Dr. Adina, for that question. Um, now, I will, I will say, like, as a Black man, what Mr. Merriwether said at the top that, and what you also confirmed about the Vera shooting, was really, really, it was really, really amazing, important. I got to learn a lot in the process of building, leading up to that video, I'm a, I'm a shoot and actually the shoot itself. As a black man, I learned a lot and engaging in eye care from the beginning, it have completely changed the way, I mean, I was, I was a researcher just doing my AI application, trying to get into practice. But now this opens a window to actually see how that AI and disruptive technology can actually impact the community. And you hear how Mr. Merriweather also confirmed that by what he experienced and what he engaged with the others. So in terms of you know, the impact to the Black community, I think Mr. Merriweather really is, I mean, he's one that can really give you what is happening in the neighborhood. But from my perspective as a black man, I can only, I can only say that what we have done in ICAR up to this point is really amazing. The, the amount of work that the team has done, the five projects, the core, in one with the process of development Vera up to this point is just so amazing. And I, I, I can just go back like 
when we were developing the viral video, you know, we had the the technician, the, the, the crew. We you could see how that impacted them. I mean, this was this was not like something that you say, oh, the, it, it was very apparent. Like this is a crew, they, they, they are hired to come and do this, but I can tell that that is going to impact them and they're going to take that to the community. They're going to take that and say, this is something, we've done something that, oh, you know, when we approach the, 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 the media company and they're explaining, at first they didn't, you know, so, oh yeah, we've done things like that. But now when they actually did it, no, we've never done anything like this. This is something else. Mm -hmm. So I, I just hope Mr. Merriweather can say a little bit how he has impacted that community from his perspective that I'm not really engaged there, but for my bench side, I think, there's a lot of impact that we've done already. Mr. Merriweather, over to you. Yeah, uh, I, I feel the video, being that I have done numerous videos <laughs> from UF Health with Dr. Yates, uh, Dr. Odetna, uh, over the years, one of the things I'm, I'm proud to be a part of is taking those videos and being able to take portions of 30 seconds or whatever and being able to tell people to go to your phone, go to your tablet. And one of the things I'm hoping is that my experience is being able to go out and actually just tell the community one of the things like with the Post. The Post was... Uh, Dr. Odetna, the Post was a place on Friday night that we raised money. We're a club, but we're a veteran organization. And I've been there almost nine years, and I always told them my vision was to change the perception from being a club to being a community-based center. And uh, I'm the Corrine Brown of, of, of the Post, meaning I delivered through the help of Mayo and Dr. Odetna and other organizations to say that we are more than just a club. We are a community resource center. Yes, we done took some stumblings over there. Yes, it's, it's hard, Dr. Chi, to get people to come out. But as Dr. Odetna would say to me, uh, I'm a numbers person, Dr. Chi. She'll say, Mr. Merriweather, don't count the numbers. If you got one person or two person coming in, it's fine. I'd be like, man, I want five <laughs> or 10 people if I'm gonna be out here. But the point is, it's like it's like the I Corps pro, the consortium. Just because it's not going well at the beginning, you don't give up. You just keep grinding. And what that means to me in closing is that we over there took the leap of faith that we want to be a part of this consortium. And yes, we are open and we are offering programs, but one of the things we're doing is we was given a little freedom to be able to ask other community partners. Do you have programs that you would like to bring into the community that we can promote? And that's what I care is about. I care ain't just saying you got to promote my program. You use our research as we develop it. We want you need an outlet, sir. You need an outlet to be able to say, here's these programs. Now, how are you going to get it out in the community? You got to have community partners. You got to have somebody out there to be able to say, will you host this event so we can come and talk about it, so we can do our clinical trials, where we can do our recruiting. I care, I care Consortium is a game changer. But the thing is, we got to have our we got to have our own members believing in the program. It's one thing to convince the community, but it's another thing to convince the, the scientists, the research, the statisticians, Hey, just because the numbers ain't coming in the way we want, doesn't mean it ain't gonna come. Just like the, the virtual. Now, I didn't never listen when I was doing that, participating with that filming. I got sad because Mr. Emmanuel started crying, and I said, "Did I hurt his feeling?" Mm -hmm. But that was the raw emotion of being able to say, "I want to talk about this." I haven't had that opportunity to mm -hmm. share my experience. And that is what, Dr. Sheet, that is what you was looking for. Not to say you asked us to do it, but mm -hmm. you was surprised at how open and how responsive the men was about sitting there, men talking about men issue. And, 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 and the consortium is basically saying, we love our black men, but our mm -hmm. black men are not doing what they supposed to do. So we got to figure out another way to get that message out. All these different projects are reaching from a, 
over the ocean to around the world saying, give us your contents, give us your input, give us your thoughts so we can we can put it together in, my, in our mixing bowl again. Now we got this mixing bowl <laughs> and everybody got a little piece to throw in that pot as they stir it around. And we hope when we pour it out, it would come out the way we want. So with the American Legion working with the veterans, with the post having the uh, IT machines, the information system, and as we partner with other community, City of Hope and all these other ones to say, here's some programs that, Dr. T, here's a suggestion. Here's what we're doing over here in the post on the ground level. Can uh, can we react that, can, can we demonstrate that to our colleagues across the water besides eye care, but saying, look, when you go back to your neighborhood, here's some things you can do that you don't, you don't need a lot of money. This is how you talk to our brothers and our sisters because the women over here get the men to the doctor. The men over there don't go to the doctor. So we gotta <laughs> convince the we gotta convince our sisters over there to say, hey, look here, tell homeboy to get up. He got to go too. <laughs> and, and when we talk about health disparity, let's talk about it. When we talk about health disparity, it don't discriminate over here. It's over there, it's over in Italy, it's over there in Rome. It's over in the Bahamas, but the question is, how can we address it globally to be able to share our resources, maybe share our information, share our ideas? That's why you have advocates, people that's on the ground to be able to take that information and put it over there where they can put it in their own words. And thank you for allowing me to speak a little longer than what I suppose. I know, perfect, <laughs> Mr. Merriweather. I think one of the things that we are seeing that I'm so excited about is now you are seeing a lot of people who are working in this area of research who are connecting over the globe. They are connecting globally. But in addition to that, we are seeing advocates like yourself who are connecting with other advocates globally as well. Uh, you know, because the only way that we can we can win this battle is to come together and to work together. I'm so excited that I'm going to be, uh, you know, having Mr. Merriweather and Mrs. Merriweather, of course, travel to the motherland with us uh, in Lagos, Nigeria, to go and expand and continue working with, um, you know, African advocates who most probably are, you know, I, I just uh, a little bit uh, um, um, behind in what we are doing in the United States and it's exciting to see that you're going to be uh, in Lagos, uh, Nigeria, Mr. Merriweather. So uh, as we are wrapping up this introduction, this has really been great. Uh, I'm going to start with Dr. Gufor. Is there anything else you would like to share before we wrap up? Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mr. Merriweather. Thanks, Dr. Adina. Um, and again, thanks to the whole ICA crew, the hub, <laughs> So just to add a little bit of, you know, to what Mr. Meriwether mentioned at the top on the six months impact. I mean, just within six months, IK has done so much. And we, as we were writing our end of year report, just going through the report on what, there's so many things. And I, I think we do have that community impact videos. Some of the videos, the media mentions that were taken in Florida. And I think those videos should be available for us to share to really know the impact of what we've done up to this point. And again, there's really more to come. Now, one last thing to share, I said, I'll say this, in eye care, we, we are developing innovative tools uh, with the capability to educate, to engage, to activate, and to capture the prostate cancer experience. Now, many traditional research programs in basic science do not capitalize on the patient experience. In eye care, we are capitalizing on the patient experience. The patient and the investigator are really the same. We wanna bring all those ones to create that innovative tool. The, the tool that will empower the patient to take more active role in their head and that tool that has the potential, the real great potential to really transform or shape the future of healthcare and more specifically in prostate cancer. So I would say, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Well said, stay tuned. A lot going on in I Care for Black Men Consortium. Mr. Merriweather, take it home for us. I would say to, the, to your audience, that's worried about prostate cancer and not really understanding what eye care consumption is, it's very simple. 
It's just very simple. We care. That's what it says. I care. I put we care mm -hmm. and we care that we want you to be here for your wives, your children, your aunts, your uncles. And so launching this wonderful global experience and consortium, do not be afraid of things you don't understand. Be afraid of the things you do understand. That's what I look at. <laughs> but the things you don't understand, don't be afraid because it's going to be cha challenges whether you listen to us or not. But know that we are out here on the battlefront trying to save lives with the wonderful scientists and the doctors and the researchers. Take that experience and know that we are trying early detection save lives. Remember, 3% every year increase. We're losing more black men in the, in the last few years. What do you take from this interview? Is that we are trying to tell you good things are in the pipeline. They're coming. And you want you need to see at the table, join us because we are looking for volunteers. We are looking for people to be able to say, I want to be a part of that journey. And this journey is to bring globally about prostate cancer health disparity in our community, whether you're in Laos, Florida, uh, mm -hmm. the Bahamas, England, know that we are out here working. And if you wanna be a part of the table, become an advocate. That's how you become. Inform yourself, go to our website, look for the icon, look for the information, look for the newsletter. Thank you for, supporting us as we take this journey to the motherland. Okay, thank you, Mr. Meriwether. Thank you so much, Dr. Ongufa. This really has been great. Everyone, thanks for joining the I Care for Black My Consortium Cancer Research Link. It has been a great pleasure introducing our consortium to you. Please connect with us through our website, social media, and email. Together, we can conquer prostate cancer in our communities. Thank you. <laughs>